pirate. I wear clanking armor. One. All right, so I go north also, and I uh, I try and beat our buddy over here. Oh, that's a nice boulder. Around the corner, and I want to uh, just, I guess, peek over the corner. How far can we move when we're stealth? Or does it matter when we're not in combat? Yeah, when we're not in rounds, when we're not actually in initiative, it doesn't really. I mean, you can just kind of slink along. All right, so I'm going to go. I mean, when you want to kind of stop and look and you want me to describe stuff, then stop where you want to, for me to describe something to you. All right, so I'm kind of stopped right here. Okay. Just just as I see those two. All right. So everybody gets to their point. <laughs> Ian's moving back and forth. <laughs> I can't tell which one is in cover and which one's not in cover. <laughs> uh, sure. Anyway, just right near that corner is fine. You're you're fine. Um. So Ian, you see to the north of you. Um, it looks like uh, additional gravestones, which were similar to the ones you passed on your left as you were heading north. Um, it just looks like it was maybe an expanded area for gravestones. And there is another giant rock in the center of that. You're not seeing any other people, but when you you can tell that this um, boulder has smashed through the building and has crushed this corner. Um, and just let me see... The yeah, let me see if there's anything you're going to see from that angle. Uh... Because that would be, it appears to be what must have been somebody, uh, a bedroom of some sort. So you're seeing bedroom type furnishings. Um, lots of stuff has been flattened by the rock. You do see uh, some things that are, it looks like a tapestry on the wall. Uh, not much has remains of the of the floor and everything i mean it just come crashing through um so it looks like a kind of like a bedroom but you're not seeing hardly anything else in there at the moment I, i'm i'm assuming that you're just making a cursory glance and you're not really going into it to search it so i'm just giving you a a basic yeah, description i'm just making sure there's no baddies in there yeah yeah so all right um so i see nothing to my east you do not. I mean, you see the other tower. You see more of the wall. You see um, another debris from another building that looks like it's been hit by something. You don't quite see what it is yet. You just see a lot of debris on the ground. Um, but and you're not seeing chicken. anything yet. And the chickens sound like... Still... Yeah. yeah still coming closer. from this area. Yeah, still coming from that area here that I'm pinging. Okay. All right. What time of day is it? It's say a couple hours before nightfall, so getting toward getting on towards dusk. Okay. Um, at the same time that Ian makes it to there, Jarl would get to, or just before that, uh, Jarl would get to their, your spot. Um, let me check what your line of sight sees there. Oh, let me. Yeah, and as you come around kind of that area, you get a glance of basically kind of like a, a farm um, coop area. And let me give you that description while we're doing that. So this is like the coop? Yeah, this is it's it's clearly a um, like an animal kennel kind of thing. Um, okay. So it's a muddy, fenced-in yard that sits uh, next to two buildings. And inside it are, you can see from where you're at, several troughs, feeding troughs, and some chicken coops. And you see two goblins uh, merrily chasing after different chickens, and they're diving around on the ground. They're trying to grab it, and they're trying to put the chickens in their bag. <laughs> they have not noticed you at this point. And just before you decide so, how to react, okay. Uh, our dwarf and Tigray. Dwarf, you are now at the door at that point where those two get to that spot. 
to the end and you see that uh, the N has a sign on the outside that says, if I scroll back down, because I already forgot it, the Nightstone Inn, uh, wrought, a big wrought iron sign on the outside. And there's a door where you're at. It's closed, I assume? It is closed. Right. Well, it's an inn. Let's go. All right. So you want to go inside the inn? Uh, yeah, you check the door and it's open. And let me move you to that area. Uh, takes a second. Oh, you're gonna be. All right. So you are now in a hallway. It's down to the. The right, if you move your map around, you should see where you're inside. You might have to zoom up to see where it's at on the map. And you're inside uh, a hallway, and you're seeing doors to either side of you, and you're seeing uh, stairs that lead to a... Uh, oh, wait, am I in the right spot? Oh, no, I'll have you in the up floor. Let me put you in the ground floor area. Sorry. We'll move you down a little bit to here. Um, okay, so you see when you walk in, um, the room to your right here as you're looking in, are you there and you see it? I'm not hearing you if you're talking. Are you still there, Graybeard? Yeah, all I'm seeing is... Oh, maybe I found me. Give me a second. Yep, okay, I found me. Okay, <laughs> there you go. Um, okay, so just to your right there, just to the south side of you, you're seeing a dining room. Um, you see strewn wreckage. A giant rock has punched through the roof, and it's obviously landed here, and it's destroyed a dining table and a pair of long benches. Um, you can see what uh, remains of a bed and wardrobe from the chamber above also lies in here now because it's crashed through the second level. Two smaller round tables and several chairs remain intact and resting atop each table is an unlit oil lamp. Um, let's also say, uh, okay, let's put you there. So you see that as you walk in, you walked in through the door and we'll put you there. Let me get T Grave caught up before we move any further. T Grave, what are you doing? I'm gonna follow the dwarf into the inn. Okay, so went right in after him just at the same time. Yeah, I figure he's he's off to get drunk. I gotta see what's going on. Okay, I'll move you down to that map also. Okay, so everybody at, now at about this time um, is on the map right about the same time. All that, So that all kind of happened in sequence. The, the dwarf and elf entered the inn. Ian made it around the top side of the building. Jaro made it around the bottom side of the building. Armel and Ayla are going to move to the bottom corner and wait for Jarl or Ian to tell them what to do or to come back and say something to him. So I'll just put them there at the bottom of the corner. So that should be timeline-wise. Everybody's caught up. Um, Jarl, what are you going to do? We'll, we'll move to you. What would you like to do? Um, all right, so I look behind me to uh, Isla, and um, I just kind of motion to just kind of wait. Uh, and then I'm going to go up to the corner... And just make sure that I don't see anything else around. And while the goblins are distracted, I'm going to just kind of scoot across to here. Yeah. Yep, they're distracted that whole time. So as you come around, you're able to see. And you're in front of... Let me see if you can figure out the building you're in front of. Does that have a sign on it? Uh, it's clearly a giant 
um, stable house barn like thing and uh, I don't think it has a sign on the outside all right if it looks like a stable yeah it's got big barn. giant doors it's definitely a, a giant kind of barn like stable building all right then I'm gonna kind of cautiously peek my head in to see if there's anything in there Um, the big doors are closed at the moment. Do can I hear anything in there? And perception check. Sweet. Perception. Oh yeah. Waiting for it to see on my screen here. There it is. Um, you hear stompings of foot. Um, obviously, horses are inside this building. Um, that's all you are hearing in there. So there's obviously horses inside there, and they they aren't making like a lot of noise, but you can hear them shifting. Um, and moving around, and you can hear, you know, the creaks and noises of obviously equipment and tack and kind of stuff that's in the in the building area there. All right, so I'm assuming there's two doors. Yeah, two big, kind of like barn doors. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna try and prop or just kind of squeeze open the the left one. Um, I guess it it opens outward or inward. They open outward towards you. Okay, so I'll try and grab the left one and just try and pull it open enough just to first see if it creaks or makes any noise. Okay. And if it um, doesn't... I'm going to have you stop there as you're starting to creak open the door. So we'll get okay. everybody caught up again. Um, Ian, you're at the top of the inn. What, were you, what was happening with you while Jarl made his dash across? I go, uh, I keep going and I peek around the corner and see what I see. Yeah, you get the same kind of description of a farm pen. Um, you see feeding troughs and chicken coops. You see two goblins racing around trying to catch more chickens and put them in a pouch. Um, they apparently are having fun doing it. They're laughing about it. And it looks like they've already caught one or two at this point, but they're still trying to get the different chickens and chase them around and they have not seen you as you get up to that corner okay so these these fences are they like pretty low yeah they're probably waist high all right and um and then within a few seconds of getting to that corner you notice yarl dash across the street um let's see i don't have a clear shot of anybody here so i I, uh, so this is, this was a building. The, yeah, that okay. is a, you see that's like a, a house. Um, let me see if there's anything walls. specific about it that I could tell you. Um, you know, a typical wooden thatched roof house, a uh, farm kind of house. Um, you can see the rock that's smashed through the uh, roof of that building. Actually, so, you see, you see a body, or a part of a body, underneath the rock. The rock has landed on somebody, and it obviously must have killed them. All right. Uh, <laughs> ouch. So what I do is I, I dash going this way, trying to reach the corner of this. Um, Guard tower. Okay. I dash over here, trying to stay hidden as much as possible. Yeah. Okay. You you make that dash, and that's where you'll get to as uh, Jarl has finished listening at the door and is about to open it. And it, as you were watching, you made your dash. You don't think they saw you. They were too enthralled in the the chickens. 
and we'll stop there a second. So that gives you guys in the end probably, you know, 30 seconds, 40 seconds, 45 seconds to tell me what you were doing in the end while that was happening outside. So T Gray, you got what's in that room, I'll go upstairs. Sounds good, Gray. How loud are you guys talking? <laughs> Dwarf volume. Oh shit. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> there is only one volume of talking what do you mean <laughs> okay uh, who wants to move first I'm gonna go look into did you meant that room by were you pointing at this door yeah or is that and, the door we came through and of course I'll glance that way when he opens it just in case there's something to kill in there the, the door that you came through is right behind you even though it's not shown on the map there should be a door right gotcha. behind you so I'm going to go towards the middle. And as I go to this door, I want to inspect this boulder that's come through. How big is it, roughly? It's larger than you. Um, probably in, in the range of like a 500-pound a round giant rock. It's embedded into the ground. There's, again, debris that's come down from the roof and whatever room is above it. Um, and also when you move to that rock, you see, uh, you actually see a dead goblin lying in the floor as you move to that rock and there's a crossbow bolt sticking out of its chest. I say, Gray, check out one of these. You didn't make it. Oh, hey, that means there's a free crossbow around here somewhere. Good point. But goblins don't seem to be that strong. How do you think they've been dealing with these rocks? This looks like siege warfare to me. And go ahead, both of you, give me a perception check if you've moved over to that. where The, the dead goblin would be just like maybe that spot right there. And I assume you both are looking at that. Go ahead and give me a perception check while you're standing over that. Nice. I'm looking very closely. Perceiving like a mofo. You you're kind of looking at the at the goblin and you think it's died pretty recently. Like the the blood is still kind of trickling out. It doesn't look like it's been here for very long. It looks very fresh type of wound. This is recent gray. Graybeard, you're you're not even sure you're seeing a goblin. You're thinking that might be a goblin, maybe not. It could be something else. Search him. I'm going through this door to the north. All right. Um, I'm going to send a message. How far is uh, is Ian too far away for me to send her a message? Let me see. She is currently from you guys 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70 ish feet. I guess I right. could use the ruler. <laughs> so I'm going to send her a message uh, letting her know that we found a goblin in the inn that has been recently killed. Very recent. Fresh blood. Okay, and Ian, you'll hear that as you're getting to the corner of the tower. So you're in the middle of your dash when that message pops into your head. Okay, I'll answer it next. Yeah, um, and then Greybeard, you said you weren't waiting. You were going to move to the next room? Yeah, this door to the north. Okay. It's going to go great that you are all separated. It's going to be fun. Shh. <laughs> I, I bet the druid would have something to say about that. Um, yeah, where's my, where's my healer and meat shield that I told to <laughs> stay right with me? You, you look behind you and you notice, wait a minute, somebody has not followed me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, and as you're going through that door, 
Um, you notice it's also not locked, and you're going to step through. And that would be, as Greybeard enters that room, that catches him up with um, Tigre, who's been searching. The dashes have happened up at the top, so we can come back around. Um, Ayla and Armel. Ayla's going to move to the front of the building. Armel is going to follow. And that would catch everybody up because they have decided they didn't want to stand at that corner any longer. And all right, so let's, let's Ayla did catch that I told her to kind of hold back, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep, she held back and then moved. <laughs> but I don't think she held back as <laughs> okay. long as she wished. <laughs> Sounds right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For this group so far, yeah. Um, okay, so all happening in another 30, 35 second round uh, action moment here. Let's go with Yarrow. Give me, you're trying to be very careful about opening the door and listening for sounds. You're being really sneaky. Give me a stealth check as you're trying to open the door. So a really good high check, it means, yeah, you're, you're, you're not making any noise when you open that door. A really bad check. I'm going to hear a creak. So let's do a stealth check on the door. Yeah, good enough. Yeah, you you start to hear it squeak a little, and you kind of adjust, and you go a little slower, and you get it popped open. And you can see um, I will move you inside, but that you're not in there. I'm not saying that you are in there, but I'm going to show you right. what it looks like. Yeah, I, I don't want to go in. I just want to see what's inside. Yeah. And so you see basically the ground floor, you see two ladders that obviously lead up to a hayloft and you can smell the hay and the horses and all the stuff. You see various tack and information, uh, stuff that you would normally see in a barn. You can hear horses in the stalls. Um, you're not actually inside there. Let me see if there's anything else that would stand out to you. Can I tell if there's any sunlight coming in from any of the stalls? No, because the rock sits in the center that has come smashing down through the ceiling. And so the whole area is pretty lit up from that. So you're not you're not sure what light is coming from where because of the rock that's sitting in okay. the middle of the floor. Um, you do know there's five horses in here. And you do see bits and bridles and leather saddles hanging on the walls and around. And two wooden ladders. Um, but you have not entered. Okay, So I'm going to move you back out. So I put you back yep. on the map. So that's what you see. Okay, and you open that door pretty slowly. You did your search. You know, maybe that's only uh, maybe took you twenty seconds or so. Ian at the top, what are you doing in that twenty second span? I um I take another quick look, and um I go towards the guard tower, and when I see that the goblins. Uh, aren't facing me, I dash inside. Okay. Is the yep. door open? Uh, no, right, it's so it's closed, in. but you could open it and try to get inside. All right, so I try and open it and to get inside. So, yeah, your stealth's been really good up until now, but you're going to actually open a door and go inside. So give me a stealth check on that maneuver to see if that catches their attention. Son of a bitch. That catches their attention. That you actually, the door makes a loud noise as you're opening it, and you realize as you're about to go in that it was loud enough that that could be a bad thing. And then, are you still going to dash in, or are you going to turn around when that noise when you hear that noise? Oh no, yeah, I still dash in. I dash in, and okay. I. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and move your move thing. to where you want. And I go in and I do the uh, same deal. I climb up the the ladder. And as I'm doing so, I guess the thing that might uh, catch their attention is that I, uh, I also say uh, to Tigre, who just spoke to me, I shake my head and I'm like, oh, you know, I don't like when you do that. And I say, um, I say, well, those words were eating on something. And then I say, shit. And I, uh, I climb up the, the tower. Same dealio. But I can't see inside this tower. So I'm just going to hang out outside. Yeah, we'll just put you... We, we know you're up... You're, well, as you're climbing 
Uh, as you hit to the bottom of the ladder, we're going to actually roll initiative because we're going to enter combat at that point. But then... And I close the door behind me. Oh, okay. I slam so it you door. slam the door behind yeah. you. Okay. Um, so, so let's go ahead and get a... Let's Just before that's going to happen, because we're going to hit initiative at that point, the guys in the room, you have about 30 seconds before to catch up with those guys. So what do you do down in the inn? Um, okay, so... Let's go Tigre. You, you've heard uh, Greybeard open the door. He's obviously walked into the room. You're standing under there. What are you doing for the next 30 seconds? Uh, I look around, and since I don't see Armel and Alo with me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, oh, geez. So I'm going to step back to behind the rock and use Mage Hand to open my door instead of myself. Okay. Are you meaning this door at the bottom here? Yes. Yeah, I think that's the door that they meant to be outside. I switched it, so ignore that as the door, and ah, I put the gotcha. door over here because it didn't make sense for me because the road leads to that part. You know, gotcha. the road wouldn't lead so that's right the, back. So that's the door we, we came in then. Yeah, that's that's what they're interpreting. I'm going to say it's just a wall. There's no door there at all. The door is okay. really over here. You do so see a window saw... here. And there's obviously rooms above you. Um, okay, so did Gray point for me to go upstairs, or did he say he was going upstairs? I don't know. I what haven't seen what's in my room yet. All right, I'll start walking upstairs and peek around the corner of the stairwell. Yeah, you can get to the middle of the next. So the, the, you've got like a flight of stairs. It comes to a little landing, and it has another flight of stairs. Yeah, you've got halfway. And that'll be your, right. you, you finished inspecting the boulder. You didn't see much else. And then you move, started going up the stairs quietly. Um, Greybeard, eight. So let's, uh, let's give you. So you walk into this room and you see. Dun, 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 dun. a goblin's back is turned to you and as you were walking in and you'd open the door it looked like he was in the process of rummaging through the things but as the door opened he heard it and he turned to look at you and we're also going to be rolling initiative for that uh Huzzah. yeah um but let me give you a little as you, so you see basically a goblin in front of you rummaging through a pantry of some sort he has, a, he has a large sack in his hand that he's obviously been stuffing stuff into. Um, you do notice that the northwest corner of the inn was destroyed by a, a giant massive falling rock. And that, that allows you to see outside. Um, most of the kitchen seems to be undamaged from where you're looking. There is a fireplace set in the north wall. And the floor is covered with broken dishware and scattered utensils. Um, and yeah, let's go. Let's go with your initiative first. Let's have everybody roll initiative. Actually, let's just do everybody rolls initiative. Uh, make sure before you do it. Hold on, give me a second to bring up the turn counter. And, and you want to make sure you've selected your token before you hit initiative. But give me one second. I want to clear it out. Uh, clear list. All right, now I've got the turn order up, so you should be able to click on your token now, and you should be able to roll your initiatives. I'm not sure my roll counts as initiative. <laughs> it's a lack of initiative. <laughs> All right. And what we're going to also do, uh, let me bring up their character sheets and get Armel and Ayla. Or actually, can I just do it from their token add turn 
Uh, probably not. Takes a second for all the screens to pop up as I go here. Bear with me. How tall are these guards towers again? About two stories. So, you know, the walls were probably 10 to 12 feet. The towers stick up a little bit above that. All right, so we got him on the list there now. Yep, that worked. And Ayla. All right. And now I need... more thing. Uh, oh, nope, that did not work. So let me add it. Uh, whew, lots to manage all of a sudden. <laughs> oh, I'm not on Chrome. I can't see anything without Chrome. There we go, and let's do a roll. Well, that's interesting, I lost my toolbar. You know how to get that back, Colonel? The right hand toolbar, the chat bar? The right hand chat bar? Uh, is it the three little. It's oh. the, yeah, it's the three little lines. There it is. Yep. Got it. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Uh,. All right, and the, the goblins <laughs> will go on a four. Totally okay with that. Uh, good. And let's sort. Okay. We have initiatives up now. Graybeard and the goblin in that room is going to be one turn ahead of everybody because his is happening as you guys are doing your things because he went in that door immediately. So, Graybeard, you get the drop. Um, what are you doing? <laughs> Just kind of <laughs> and kill him with my great axe. <laughs> Right, so just gonna charge <laughs> forward and <laughs> hack. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, so yeah, you can move and attack. Oh yeah. Yep. Uh, and hit, so you can hit the word "great axe" at the bottom of your roll to give you. Ooh, snap. Oh, wow, that's crazy good damage. That's uh oh you rolled a twelve on the one D twelve. Nice. Um that is going to uh, Let me pop that out and get back to this guy. That is a clear death. Before it can really even react, drop it, sack, or do anything, you've cleaved it right straight down the skull. And just 
split the skull right in half and then it falls to the floor. Call this shot. <laughs> um, it doesn't even really make a sound. It was so, you know, so precise. Um, so let me... Oh, wrong one. Let me put a symbol on it as a dead body. And you still have... What would you like to do next? Because you still have a tiny bit of time here before you catch up to the other's timeline. Uh, can I use my interaction to grab his bag? Yeah. Yep, you can pick up the sack. Um, and also... Uh, you you want to look in the sack? You have time to just open it and take a little peek inside. That'd be great. All right. So you see inside the sack several muffins, a block of cheese, a cooked chicken, a frying pan, an iron pot, a lantern. Looks like some flasks with some liquid in it. You think is probably just like uh, oil of some sort. Um, cooking cooks utensils, jar of cloves, jar of saffron, <laughs> a silver jug, and a cracked hourglass. Score. Uh, should I write all that down? Um, we'll do that when maybe things calm down because you now you're carrying like three sacks of stuff. So at some point you're gonna have to figure out what you're gonna do with all these sacks you're carrying around. Sounds good. And you're starting to think you're probably getting to the point that you're not going to be able to carry very more, very many more. They're kind of awkward to carry all three of these sacks that, that you have. All right, that would get just caught up to the other timeline here. So you were just now caught up to uh, Ian being noticed by the goblins in the top of the round. So we'll be at the very top of the round, and T. Gray gets to go at the top of that. You hear, um, you just hear the feet of the dwarf kind of charge forward. That's about the only noise you hear um, in that room as you were going up the stairs. So that's about as much as you heard. All right. I just mumbled to myself. That's more dwarf looking happening. So I'm going to go up and look into the rest of this room around the corner. Okay. Yeah, let me move you to... You are there. You are in a hallway, and you can see four doors in this hallway or the stairs that lead back down. All right. Um, I'll mage hand the southwest one. Uh, ping it. Okay, so you just mage hand that one open. Um, from where you're standing... You can tell it's probably a guest room, and you're not really seeing anything in there. Has two beds, uh, from what you can tell, wardrobe, a desk, a chair. That's about as much as you can tell being outside of it. All right, I'll uh, step closer and peek in. Okay, yep. So. That'll give you a, yeah, you got plenty of room for that. Um, yeah, basically just contains two beds, empty wardrobe, a desk, matching chair, and oil lamp sits on the corner of the desk, not lit. Another one rests on a small table tucked between the two beds, and there's a bearskin rug that lies on the floor. You're not seeing anything else. All right. If I have enough room, I'll walk to the southeast one. But otherwise, that's probably my round. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, you probably you probably have another five foot of. Now, now looking inside that room and trying to scope it out, that would have been your your action. Okay. Um. Okay. So you went. So that gives us brings us to Greybeard. You are up again now. No one else in the room. No. Uh, does it look like? he looted the joint 
that's what he was yeah the cupboards are thrown open he's obviously all the stuff that he was grabbing in or in the sack definitely looks like stuff that would have come from this kitchen all right i uh stuff is much i try to take the three bags that i have and stuff them in my pack um because the bags are filled with a lot of bulky stuff it's not going to fit in your backpack you're gonna have to carry them around like you're, you're basically kind of like holding the the tops of all of them and carrying them around and you i'm just at this point been assuming you drop them whenever you go to do something sounds good i will continue to do that and uh it do i think that door to the east goes outside yeah yeah okay. it's clearly like a back door to the kitchen so then I'm this gonna, right here yeah then i'm gonna head back uh into the main room and go up the stairs figure out where where my uh wizard's gone okay so you would have enough movement to move will you move 25 or 30 dwarf 25 Yep, so you can move each square is five feet, so you can go ahead and make your twenty-five you know, your five squares. And you can move your guy. About there, I think. Okay, yep, seems good. Um so that would have been your action was looking around. Movement action sounds good. We're moved to our Mel is in the turn order. Uh, Armel is going to hold action, and the trigger, he will attack something if it gets within hitting, you know, staff hitting range. He will bash something in the head if it gets that close. So he's going to hold his action, which will mean we will move to Ian is up. Inside the tower. You're at the bottom of the, the ladder as the turn starts, as the six seconds happens okay so i have a logistical question mm -hmm. um so as a as an outlander i get a staff it is that like a will that count like as a quarter staff or for like hitting stuff quarter staff sure damage yeah all right yeah. so i um i climb up the the ladder and i stay up there i take out my quarter staff well i could look out right it's not that large of a of a of a thing so i look out and i see if the goblins are coming and if they are coming um oh no i can attack them because they're not coming oh sweet i thought i had an awful initiative like i usually do i so i take out my longbow and i shoot at them Okay, yep, yep. So you scamper up, the, you use um, 10 feet of your movement to scamper up um, and then 5 feet of your movement to get to the edge. So you can see the, the dwarves who are looking at the door and then now are staring up at you and it looked like they were about to start moving towards your way and you do get to attack. All right, so I roll for the closest one to me. Okay. Yeah, and that will hit. All right. Sweet. And I believe... Okay, yep, so you hit one with an arrow. Um, it does not appear to go down. I would imagine that. Uh, but you definitely it it you know an arrow and a and a goblin is always a good thing. <laughs> so okay, um, you probably have a tiny bit of movement left, not much, if you uh, wish to use the rest of it or any bonus actions if your class affords you a bonus action. Oh man, I read no, I uh, I don't. When I turn around and I look at the um, at the ladder, and I ready myself uh, for when they for when they come. Okay. Just like mentally, because I can't actually do anything. All right. Okay. And then yeah, that will bring us to Ayla. 
Um, Ayla's going to hold her action until something presents itself. She still has her bow out. Um, and she's waiting to see if the goblins are going to come her way. And she will shoot if they do, but she's also waiting to see what Jarl is doing at the door of the barn. So she's going to be on a hold. And that will move us to Jarl. So we are at Jarl's turn. You're muted, Colonel. Just mute doves. I'm hearing a roll, but I'm not hearing. <laughs> Do we lose, Colonel? Maybe he looks muted. Yeah, it looks muted to me. Okay, maybe he walked off a second. Well, let's do this. Let's take our five, our five, ten minute break right here, our first break of the night, and or maybe our, our only break of the night, but we'll go ahead and take a quick break, and then we'll pick back up on Jarl's turn. So let's go ahead. It's uh, My clock says 8.44, so let's come back by 8.54 or 54 on whatever your clock is, and we'll continue the round. Sounds I'm gonna good. I'm going to switch over and mute uh, all those that are watching us on the stream. Thanks for watching us so far. we got plenty more to go. Um, stay tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs> 